I'm Henry Chesbro. I'm a professor of technology management and innovation at the Haas School of Business at University of California at Berkeley. I'm also perhaps better known as the author of the book Open Innovation, uh, which is now in its third printing uh, from 10 years ago. Uh, and I'm delighted to say the book is still uh, active, alive, and generating a lot of interest. Hi, I'm Jason Eichenholz, CEO of Open Photonics. Open Photonics is a, an early stage technology accelerator company that focuses on accelerating the adoption of photonics technologies. I had been trained both in my previous work experience in the computer industry and also in my academic training studying R&D management that typically the companies who invested the most in R&D could create barriers to entry against their competitors and so more and bigger was going to be better. But in my own work experience in the computer industry, I saw lots of small companies surprisingly be very successful against some of the very large companies. So when I put these case studies side by side, not only Lucent, but Intel, IBM, Xerox and Xerox Park, and some of the pharmaceutical companies, I began to see a bigger trend. And the bigger trend was toward openness. The companies that were overly closed, inwardly focused, and highly vertically integrated we're losing market share in the markets against companies that were more open, more dynamic, and more flexible. And so this is when I began to get this idea that we need a new way to think about innovation in an environment where useful knowledge is spread all over the globe. And if you think about physics, this is a discipline that follows this pattern quite well. As recently as the late 1980s, in journals like Physics uh, Review of Letters, more than two-thirds of the articles were published in that journal from people working in the U.S. Today, 30 years later, it's the opposite. More than two-thirds of the articles in that same journal are being published by people working outside the U.S. And that shows the dispersion of expertise and knowledge uh, in theoretical physics all over the globe. Uh, and this becomes a wonderful resource if you can tap into it. If you take a highly vertically integrated approach, it becomes a terrible threat because there's all this stuff out there potentially against you. So what the lesson from the Cisco's of the world is to open up and find ways to connect to and embrace that rather than simply ignoring it and trying to fight against it. Unfortunately, a lot of the ideas in the book didn't apply to a typical photonics company. The companies like GE or Procter & Gamble have $100 million open innovation programs. And yet, a lot of the companies in the photonics space don't even have revenues of $100 million. So, I created a combination crowdsourcing open innovation model that would allow a much smaller company to implement an open innovation model. By bringing together multiple companies together in one large open innovation call with SPIE, we're able to create a scale and volume and energy to bring in lots of good ideas from SPIE's innovation community and bring that to photonics companies or companies looking to use photonic technology in their marketplace but don't know where to begin. So this was very interesting to me because I'm not simply interested in looking at the practices of the very largest companies but whether these practices can scale down to startups and smaller companies as well. Uh, and this was really a proof of concept that this idea of harnessing ideas and giving them initial funding, looking to second stage prototype development, should they actually complete the first stage successfully, uh, could be available for companies at a small fraction. I believe the 21st century will be the era of the photon. I believe that with photonics technology, we'll be able to accelerate new things. It'll be just like the 20th century with the electronics revolution. Unfortunately, we're still in the vacuum tube era of photonics. We need to make that transition from the vacuum tube era to that inflection point like the transistor. And a whole new industries will be created. We hope open photonics will be part of that revolution and accelerating the adoption of photonics technologies. So one hope I have for open photonics is to show that open innovation processes can work in small and medium companies as well as the very, very large companies. Uh, I think uh, Jason has already been through the process in his former company. He's already learned some of the things that make it work well. I think their arrangements for intellectual property, for example, are exactly right. 
that it's very open and uh, very much protecting the inventor in the first phase and only in the later phase do they actually get into some of the arrangements that people sometimes get hung up on at the very beginning stages of collaboration even before there's been any real value created. So seeing this demonstrated and developed uh, in an industry that I don't know well, in a company size and scale that's much smaller than the companies I typically study, that's part of what makes it exciting for me. If someone's got a great idea, we want to talk to them. The process is very simple. It's as easy as one, two, three. You go to our website and we have three simple steps. You fill out your contact information, you review the terms and conditions, load up your, con your abstract, and submit. We'll only accept a three-page application. In that application, you need to answer three questions. What do you want to do? Why do you think it would be received well by the market? Why is it needed? And the third is how are you going to do a proof of concept? If you can answer those three questions in three pages, you're ready to go. Please apply.